Okay, as we continue our study in the second epistle of John, we talked about uh, the writer, when it was written, the chapters, the paragraphs, the external evidence. You go back and see first and part two of this study found on YouTube and Sermon Network. We looked at the external evidence about John. We looked at the internal evidence of John. Last time we studied the John the Apostle. We looked at his life. Uh, let you know again, if you haven't seen the previous videos or heard the audio of this, I'm breaking this down for a newborn babe in Christ. To those who are aged in, in the Lord, those who have matured. We're not going to speed through this like on a highway. We're going to break it down. We're going to look at it. Some stuff you may know, some stuff you may not know. You may learn something. It may be a review. Even the Lord's Supper is to remind us of what Jesus Christ has done for us. It is to remind us that he's coming back. So as we study this, we're doing a complete study. And we pick up now from the Apostle John. We pick up the Second John, the paragraph and the outline itself of the book. The first paragraph is the salutation. It covers Second John, and there's, no, there's only one chapter, so verses 1 through 4. And the key word in that is truth. The second paragraph is love as a command. That's Second John chapter 1, verses 5 through 6. And the key word there is commandment or commandments. And the third paragraph is deceivers. That's Second John chapters one seven through nine. And the key word is Christ. Is that amazing that uh, here with the focus is on deceivers, but Christ is the main key word. Paragraph four is no fellowship with. That's Second John verses ten and eleven, and the key word is him, the reference to the deceiver. And the fifth and final paragraph is the concluding or the final or the finish. Second John verses twelve and thirteen, and the key word is right, w r w r i t e, or face. We're going to break these down into paragraphs, but we're going to break them down into words. Some of these we're going to just stop right at a word. We're going to park and we're going to study. So let's get the first paragraph read. Following, we're going to open up through the Bible, Second John. We're going to read. We've finished the, uh, the introduction. Now we get into the verse. I think this is part three of the study. And the elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. For the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us, and shall be with us forever. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. Now I pray before these, before we even get started, I pray while I read them. Prayer is always the key. Now what we've seen in just those three verses, many words. And we start off with the elder, and we're going to park right there. We've got in two words. It's one elder. It's not plural. In the Bible, the King James 1611 version, elder is 20 times in the scriptures. Elders is 179 times. There are 194 verses for 199 words. 
So there are five verses in your Bible, at least. Well, there are some verses in the Bible where elder or elders are more than once in a verse. Found most is Deuteronomy. 20 verses. The book of Acts, 18 verses. Matthew, 13 verses. Revelation, 12 verses. And Exodus, 11 verses. Now, the study, completely, we need scripture with scripture. You need your Bible. We go too quick, write it down, check it out later. Don't just take my word for it. I may lie to you. I may, 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 I may make a mistake. As we studied before, we, I did find there was two or three verses that when we turned there, there was a dead link. I make mistakes. The book doesn't. God doesn't. So let's turn to the first place we see in Genesis where elder shows up. And it's important as we turn to Genesis chapter 10. Genesis chapter 10. And Genesis chapter 10 is an important part of the Bible. Because in Genesis chapter 10, you have the list of nations from three boys of Noah to the world population that is today. Now the Bible, Paul writes to Timothy and Titus that we're not to be caught up in genealogies. It's a waste of time. But there's one thing sure that you can trace your heritage to two men. One that is of Noah and that one is of Adam. In Genesis 10, you have the three boys of Noah. Ham, Japheth, and Shem. And their children. And we see in Genesis 10, verse 21, the first place that Elder shows up. Unto Shem, also the father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Japheth, the elder. Even to him were children born. Okay, we're told two things in this, in this verse, in this chapter. Japheth, the elder. Out of Ham, Shem, Shem and Japheth, Japheth is the firstborn of Noah. He is the elder. And this tells us elder is an age definition. And you need to learn that where a word first shows up in the Bible... It's an important to take the reference. First place God shows up, he shows up as creator. First place the heavens and earth show up is God creating them. And how the public school tries to debate all that stuff and change it. Now, age. Elder has two Bible definitions. Age as in Japheth, the oldest boy. And it has position 
a place of authority. Now let's look at the last place Elder shows up. All the way to the book of Revelation, the other side of your Bible. Revelation 19.4 Revelation 19.4 And the four and twenty elders you can find them in Genesis chapter I mean Revelation chapter four and the four beasts fell down and worshiped God that sat on the throne saying Amen and Hallelujah. Now these elders are not aged, well they're aged, but this is not the elder as far as age. But this is a position. This is a place that where they have been placed by God. Where the first place we saw was a age of a man. These elders, we don't know who they are. We know there are 24 of them. We know they sit around the throne of God. And they give glory to God. Elder is a position or an age. Or as we saw the Bible order, an age and position. Which is very important to, to read and study your Bible. Because there are three forms of elder in your Bible. Exodus 3.16 And you can't grow any further in the Bible till you know what the Bible is saying, what the Bible is talking about, and who they're talking about. Exodus 3.16 And this first category we're looking at four or five verses, is a governmental authority. In Exodus 3.16, go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you, seeing that which is done to you in Egypt. So here is a group of men, we don't know how many, but they are in position in Israel as the authority of the government of Israel. And they are called together for Moses to speak to them, for Moses to give them the testimony that God has something for them, and they are to take what Moses gives to them and to pass it on to the people. So this is a position. And a quite possibility and age too. Because you're not going to have somebody who's 30 years old. Running a group of people in a government form. There are some kings that when you look in, in the Chronicles study. There are some kings, I mean they were 6 and 7 years old. They had people helping them rule. But as far as a nation governor, you would think that somebody that is aged. But for this study right here with the governmental, this is a body of people who are in rulership. As we look now in chapter 4 of Exodus 29. And Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Israel. Now there were twelve tribes of Israel. Twelve sons of Jacob. It goes Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the twelve tribes. There would be at least twelve elders. One from each tribe. 
And they are the leaders over the people under the priest here under Moses, which is under God. See, God has an order. Evolution says that from nothing here we are and it's a, a complete chaos. But God has an order. God has a way of running things. A proper way of running things. Ruth chapter 4. The book of Ruth chapter 4. Small little book in your Bible. Chapter 4, verse 2. And he took ten men of the elders of the city and said, Sit ye down here. And they sat down. Boaz is about to do a legal process here for marriage and for land of Ruth from her husband that died. He calls four elders of the city. Now who are these elders? They would be men that are in charge, that run, that have an authority of this city. You would probably say in this case here, it'd be one of them would be a mayor. They would be at least a, a councilman. Maybe the city lawyer or attorney. But there are men that are involved with the business of running the city and to make sure and to see that everything is done properly. Here in chapter 4, it is a legal matter. The Bible says, and Boaz is a man of the Bible, he does what God tells him to do. It says you're to have two or three witnesses of a matter. It shall be established. But that's not what Boaz is calling these elders for. He's calling them for official business. And then as witnesses. So he's using these men that are in governmental power and also using them to seal the witness about a transaction that's going to happen. These are not just any men he calls off the street. It says the elders of the city. Now one more place. First Kings twenty one eight. First Kings twenty one eight. First Kings twenty one eight. So she, this is Jezebel, wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal and sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in the city dwelling with Naboth. We have two classes of people mentioned here, the elders and the nobles. Well, the nobles are the people that are known. They have a name among the city. The elders are those like we saw in the book of Ruth that are in charge of the matters of the city and Jezebel writes an official document a decree that it needs to go to the mayor it needs to go to those, the police chief it needs to go to those involved in in charge of this city because it is a royal business I don't mean business as transaction I mean it's a royal decree it is a matter for the people of the city it's an important document that needs to be documented. It does not need just your average uh, blue or white collar worker. It needs somebody who is somebody in the city. That is the way that God runs an orderly governmental fact. 
There are powers that be. Now, that's governmental. That's part A. Part B. Matthew 15.2. Uh, yeah, Matthew 15.2. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 2. And you can find, you study your own. As I said, it's it's 199 words in the Bible. And we're not going to... Uh, we're not going to study every word. When that's not what we're doing, we'll be here forever. What we're doing is we're studying the most important things. That what needs to be studied. And if you find something lacking, well, the Bible says, Study to show thyself approved under God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Gives you an opportunity. Now, Matthew chapter 15, verse 2. We read, Why do thy disciples transgress the traditions of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Now, would you say that is a governmental? It sounds like it, but it's not. Part B of an elder is Jewish elder. Now, here is a Jewish elder. He said, well, what's the difference between Ruth and Exodus? Here is an elder who is making spiritual religious laws. No king, no ruler had a right to make laws that contrary God. That was the priest's job in the book of Moses. Here are elders that say that they come up with a tradition that it is holy to wash your hands. They are elders of the Jewish people. They are leaders of the Jewish people. But they don't necessarily have a government function. But here is a spiritual or a religious function. Let's see him again in the same book, Matthew 21, 23. 21, 23. As you're studying the, the, the Gospels, you need to understand the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, and the elders. Those were the rulers. Those were the government forms of, Jew, of Jews. But not officially because they were under the power of Rome. There were limitations that Rome gave Jews to have. They brought Jesus Christ to the Roman government to have him crucified because the Jews did not have an authority to practice um, capital punishment. But Matthew 21, 23. And when he was come into the temple, the chief priest, there's Aaron's family, and the elders of the people came unto him, asking what, asking, let's try this. The elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching. And they questioned his authority. Here these men did not like the ones where Moses went and said, Go gather the elders. Of this. I mean, they're in charge of the people. But these guys have also intervened and walked into the priesthood. They're with the priests. And they have joined in with the priests to fight against God and who gives you the right. How do you know they were not really working with the people, but the people were going with Jesus Christ? They were following Jesus Christ. And these men here had to have a riot before Pilate in order to get Jesus Christ crucified. They had to incite violence and screaming and yelling 
to get the people to turn. Other than that, the people were following Jesus. These guys were against Jesus. They were not representation of the people. Had they been representation, representation of the people, then the nation would have received Jesus Christ. So I'm trying to show you these elders of Israel, they did a flip-flop. They're not walking with God. Matthew 26, 57. They are in charge of the people, but they have no real authority because of the Roman government. Whereas in Moses' time, they had full authority, especially when they left Egypt. They had full authority when Boaz wanted to take care of Jewish matters. Now they're fighting against God. In Matthew 26, 57. And they that had laid hold on Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Now here, here, here's the high priest again. Here's the scribes. And here's the elders. And what are they doing? They are going against God. They are going against the scriptures. They are going against the people. The people love Jesus. They are following Jesus. They are doing what Jesus tells them to do. Here the leaders of the nation have completely forsaken God's way, God's truth, and God's life very much like what America is doing today America the president the Capitol Hill to the Supreme Court to the courts that don't have you swear in the Bible to the public school systems where they don't allow you to have a Bible have completely disregarded God and his son and the word which is Jesus Christ but there are people out there who love the word and love the Lord and want to do right. They're not really leaders of the people, not leaders of me as a born-again Christian, because I cannot follow them in 100%. Where back in Exodus, Moses was told by God to call the leaders. The leaders were to, were, Moses was to speak to the leaders. Then the leaders would speak what Moses told them to the people faithfully. These are unfaithful Jewish elders. Acts 22.5 The book of Acts 22.5 And we read, as also the high priest does bear the me witness, and all the estate of the elders, from which also I received letters unto the brethren, and went to Damascus to bring them which were there bound unto Jerusalem for to be punished. Paul got his written orders. From the elders to go and persecute Christians. They were Jewish elders against the work of God, against the work of Jesus Christ. And they gave Paul authority. Now, where did they get their authority from? It says from the high priest. They didn't get the authority from the government rule no more because who's the government rule? Rome. There is no Jewish king. They crucified him. So these elders are under the priests who are perverted. Who don't even know who God is and they're the ones that are supposed to know God. And fail. So here's a government elder that's not obeying God. Part C, or letter C. There are Christian 
elders. Acts 11, 30. Acts 11, 30. Which also they did and sent to the... Let me try this again. Which also they did and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. Alright, these elders are in Jerusalem. But these are not Jewish. They're Jewish elders, but they're saved Jewish elders. This is James, the head of the church in Jerusalem. If you read 27 to 30, there's a, I believe this is where the famine, there's a dearth in the world. And the Jerusalem church, the Christians, the born-again believers, need help. So Paul and uh, Barnabas, excuse me, yeah, Paul and Barnabas, they gather money. They get money from the church, and they send it to Jerusalem. And when they get to Jerusalem, they hand it to the elders. That's with an S. To take the money and bring it to the help in Jerusalem. So there are Christian elders. Chapter 15, verse 2. And who are they? What are they? Are they government? Should I go run for the government? Should I be a born-again Christian on Capitol Hill? Let's check the scriptures. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small desertion, decision and disposition with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto apostles and elders about this question. Oh, we see the apostles. Paul and Barnabas need to go to Jerusalem to the apostles. There's a matter at hand. They need to get something straightened out in the church. And not only are they going to go to the apostles, but they're going to go to the elders also. Who are these elders? What are these elders? 1 Timothy 5.17 First Timothy five seventeen. You got to get the scripture right. Well, I read in my Bible that there's an elder for the government, there's an elder for the Jewish. I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna be a I'm gonna be the born again Christian president and be the elder. You don't know scriptures. First Timothy five seventeen. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. Okay, now we're starting to nail the, uh, the, the into the wood. The hammer has now made the second strike and the nail is going to pierce the wood. We're building something now. For the Christian and elder labors in what? The word and doctrine. I've got another reference here. Let me go back and find it. I don't have this in my notes. But God is great. Works with me every day. Glory to God. Acts is either five or six. Not five. Chapter six. Let me write this down, please. Who are these people that labor in the word and doctrine? And who are they not? I think you have an idea. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to be in a position of the church and now I'm an elder. Well, let's read. Acts chapter 6, verse 2. 
Then the twelve called them, that's the apostles. Called the multitude of the disciples unto the multitude of the disciples unto them, and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God. Remember 1 Timothy 5 17? Somebody is to labor in the word of God and in doctrine. The apostles are speaking. They say, Listen, we labor in the word of God. We shouldn't leave it. Verse 3, Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost, and wisdom whom we may appoint over this business. What business? Taking care of the people in the church, not the word of God. Read verses 1 and 2 to yourself. People in the church are not being taken care of, and the church is being blamed. The, the, the apostles are being blamed, and they're saying our job is to take care of the word of God. Not the people. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to minister in the word. First Timothy five seventeen. I'm gonna write that down right here. See, God works with you every day. Even I learn. Who are these people? These are your first deacons. And they are not called elders. And I'm sorry that there are some churches out there where the deacons rule the pastor, and that's anti scriptural. They become the, the, the elders, and they become like the ones in Jesus' time that we read under the Jewish, where they killed the word of God, John 1 1. How's that? The deacons are not the elders. They do not match 1 Timothy 5.17. The elders that are spoken here in 6 are the ones that say, Hey, we need this office. We need this new office. But it's not the office of, a de uh, not the office of an elder, but the deacon. Let's continue on. Titus 1.5. Titus chapter 1 verse 5. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldst set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city as I appointed thee. Okay, so the elders of the Christian are to labor in the word, they are to pray, and they are to labor in doctrine, and set an office called deacons, and they are to be ordained. Do you have an idea who this person is? What church office is the guy supposed to labor in the word? He's not to have a job. You were to give him a double honor, the scripture said. His job is to pray. His job is doctrine. His job is to be in the word. Not the workplace. Too many of you guys think that this elder, he has nothing better to do. He just works Sunday and Wednesday night. And you're foolish. You don't know any better. You need to say, Pastor, let me be with you for three days and see what he does. James 5.14. James 5.14. Let's see what else he's supposed to do. And can I say something? If your elder in the church doesn't do this stuff that we're reading out of the scriptures, you don't have a proper elder. Does your elder labor in word, in prayer, and doctrine? Has he been ordained by the Holy Spirit, by God, by Jesus? You have read 2 Corinthians 11, haven't you? That there are elders in the pulpit that are of Satan. You have read 2 Corinthians 11. Well, let's do James 5.14. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. 
Well, look at that. That's an S. My church has a, an associate pastor. Is that doctrinally correct? Y yes. There's elders of the church. One church, one person sick, and there are elders, plural. Why do you have more than one elder? That's the question. Is there too much work to be handled? Is the elder too lazy to handle the work? Does it give him the title of senior pastor? Or? But here is another qualification for the elder of the church that when people are sick, you are to call upon him. How can you call upon him and go to the hospital if he is at a job? Supporting his family, which he's supposed to do, while the church starves him. Huh? Does the does the elder have the ability, and does not come when you're sick and anoint you? Listen, we're reading scriptures. I'm giving you the, 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 the book, the chapter, and the verse for you to read and check it out. I'm not adding nothing to it. I'm just telling you what the scriptures say. How's that sound? 1 Peter 5 1. 1 Peter 5 1. The Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, it shall be established. You've heard me say that enough. Luke wrote the book of Acts. Paul wrote Timothy and Titus. James wrote James. And we're getting a fourth witness from Peter. First Peter five one. The elders which are among you, I exhort who am who am also an elder, so Peter is an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. Not of filthy liqueur, but of a ready mind. Who is an elder that is in charge of scriptures, in charge of doctrine, in charge of prayer, in charge of the sick, and is to feed the flock? In the Christian part C. He's the pastor of the church. And there are some pastors out there that did what Moses, a type of Jesus, a type of God, faithfully told the people what Moses told them. And there are elders that run around trying to crucify, trying to kill the word Jesus Christ. So they will get the fame of the people and the glory of the people. Did you get that? There are some that say John being elder in this epistle because of his age. And he was aged. What did we say before? When he... We have it here. It said approximately 90 AD he was banished to the Isle of Patmos. He passes away in about between 98 to 100 AD. And according to Epiphanes, he was about 94 years old. 
Uh, if he wrote it this about between 80 and 85, that is approximately 50 years after Jesus Christ was crucified. When he writes his letter, he's 70, 80 years old, if not older. That would qualify as an elder. Genesis 10, 21. He is also the close, he's at the close of his life, and was the last apostle to be alive. John survives all the apostles. We also find the elder in the third epistle of John in verse 1. So 2nd and 3rd Timothy are connected by the elder. Peter in his epistle, 1st Peter 5, 1, calls himself an elder, as we already read. Run some scriptures here, but we're not. I won't open. I'll tell you. You can check them out. First Timothy five one, the elder merits respect as a father. This would be an age and position for elder. He's the he's your father. That's position, and father. He's usually older than the children. 1 Timothy 5.2 Women Its location here is to age. It is not positional because women are not to preach. Chapter 2 verse 12 So it's not a position for a woman but her age. And how many times have these two, versions, uh, these two uh, verses here have the man and the woman of age been disrespected in this day and age. There's no more sir and no more ma'am. And when you go to public places and there's no more seats, well, you women stood up for now and you lost your seat and you're left standing. There was a time when a man would give the woman his seat. No more. You earned the right to stand, so stand up. While us men sit down. And meanwhile now the children have no respect for their parents. They have no respect for their grandparents. And they have no respect for the pastor. For anybody in authority. Like the police or the president of the United States. No matter who he is. 1 Timothy 5.17 Rulership and double honor. As one that labors in the word. And doctrine. And we saw that this is the pastor. And thus this is position. You may have a pastor in your pulpit. Where you are older than he is. But if he's been ordained by God. And he labors in the word and doctrine. And he goes to those that are sick. And everything that we looked at. He may be younger than you are. But he still has the title of elder position. And he needs to be respected as thus. I mean, wouldn't you think that Moses had people that were older than him? Don't you think Aaron, there was people older than he was? But God ordained them both. Titus 1.5 is ordaining ministry as 1 Timothy 5.17. It's a position of authority. So elder has two brackets. It's age and or position. It is represented in the government. It is represented in the Jewish. And it's represented in the church. You might want to check out 1 Timothy 5.19. Hebrews 11.2. James 5.14 and 1 Peter 5.1 and verse 5. Now John was truly aged. The date is set near 90 AD as I said. And it's approximately 60 years since Calvary. 
John was in the garden and he was at the cross. The biblical vocation of a man was 30 years old. I got that from Numbers 4.3, Numbers 4.23, and Numbers 4.30, etc. And Luke 3.23. John would be well into his 90s, making an age circumstance. So he could be called elder, not only by position, but also by age. He is as well as the select three disciples in Jesus' life. Peter, James, and John. The beloved disciple of Jesus Christ was he. Age and position and the relationship he had to Jesus. John was truly an apostle of honor. At the cross he saw more than any other disciple. It's not even recorded that Peter or James was there at the Jesus' crucifixion. But we read that John was there. And we read that Jesus spoke to John upon the cross. I also have to admit that true that Peter, James, and John were the epistle writers. Gospel of John, 1st, 2nd Peter, epistle of James. Now some may differ here. Some think it's James the Lord's brother, but I think it's the James of the Peter, James, and John. Three of John's epistles in the book of Revelation. John was an apostle, a prophet, a writer, a teacher, evangelist. That would, that would be for a position as well for his age. It is not bad for a Jewish fisherman. These three men walked with Jesus where others did not. They had a closer walk with thee. John the Elder would be age, position, and a relationship, and a closer walk with Jesus would make him the perfect elder spoken about in 2 John 1.